This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive as I'm taught the Word of God. My life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. You may be seated. If you have a Bible, we're going to start off in Ephesians 1. And we're wrapping up this series, How Faith Works. And we're kind of coming back to where we began, and that is with this concept that faith is now. Say it out loud. Faith is now. now. A very common mistake that you hear in Christian circles is to take the promises of God and shove them off into the future. I have actually heard... I have actually been to funerals. I have actually heard with my own ears ministers say that God healed so-and-so by killing them. I've heard this with my own ears. Well, I'm not sick, but if I did get sick and I found out the Lord wanted to heal me by killing me, I think I just prefer to muddle through sick. What is that? That is taking promises of healing, which are for when, now, and shoving them off into the future. And the ultimate future is what? Eternity. Why, why would the Bible even talk about healing if it had to do with eternity? Because there won't be any sickness in eternity. It has to be for now. Why would the Bible talk about prosperity if prosperity were all about heaven? Because in heaven, we're not going to have any electric bills or rent. It has to be now. So a very common thing that you hear in Christian circles is to take the promises of the Word of God, which are for the now, and shove them off into the future. And then this shows up in the language even of devoted people. I know God is going to. So long as the words, I know God is going to, are coming out of your mouth, you are defeated. I know God will. As long as the words, I know God will, are coming out of your mouth, you will remain defeated. Ephesians 1.3, Paul praying, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Has is past tense. Number one, you are already blessed in Christ. Say it out loud. I am already blessed. blessed. See, the problem is not that we have to figure out how to get blessed. The problem is we have to find out how to walk in the blessing we have already been blessed with. And this is why some of you get to a point financially and you don't go beyond it. And the reason is primarily because you're more concerned about what people think than you are with what God thinks. I crossed a bridge in the early 90s. I just crossed a bridge. I just, I just made up my mind. I was going to walk in what God's Word said for my life and it uh, didn't matter to me what people thought. I remember the first time I took action on that. I mean, we had these two used cars and they were constantly a nuisance, constantly a problem, constantly had repairs on Sue's car. We had the air conditioning go out. And I'm telling you, man, I mean, you know, you want to talk about something expensive and air conditioning going out on a car with no warranty. I mean, that gets expensive. 
And I just crossed the bridge mentally. And I, I went out and I bought my first BMW. It was a year old. It had 11,000 miles. But it looked like new. And I caught so much flack over that. I mean, what kind of people would fall out over a guy driving a used BMW? But see, I crossed the bridge up here that I was going to walk in what God said about my life, and it didn't matter to me what people thought. A lot of it's just a mental hurdle. Say it out loud. I'm going to walk in the will of God for my life, regardless of what people think. See, you just came through Thanksgiving, so a lot of you, unfortunately, are hunkered down mentally and shell-shocked. Because everybody who wants, every relative who wants to borrow money from you gave you their theories, ideas, and opinions on Thursday. They told you what they thought about tithing. They told you they thought you were crazy for going to church twice a week. They, thought you, they said they thought you were a fanatic. On and on and on, blah, blah, blah. And brother, can you spare a dime? <laughs> every expert I know is broke. Say it out loud. I am already blessed in Christ Jesus in the heavenly realms. So we've been teaching on how faith works. See, the, the challenge of it is not to get God to do something. The challenge of it is not for me even to get blessed. The challenge of it is simply this, to learn how to walk in what God has already done in my life. Because he's done the work. And here's the big issue, and this is in the culture. The big problem in the culture is this. The culture believes, and you know, it's, it's everywhere. The culture believes that the pie is only so big. And so if you make 100K, and then you go to 150K, and then you go to 200K, well, you're taking advantage of some poor, dis unfortunate whatever out here. See, in other words, they have a static view. But as a child of God, as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, by definition, it is impossible for you to have a static view because you have identified with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Of course they have a static view because their whole, view, their whole world view is based on two bulls. Give me a bull and a cow, and things aren't static. Are you listening to what I'm saying? You give me a bull and a cow, things are not static. Because what, what happens? We go from two to what? We go from two to three. Well, if that's true in the natural, why can't we see that that's true in anything having to do with what God designed? This universe is not static. And so, if you get blessed, you're not diminishing your brothers and your sisters in the Lord. What do you think? You think God's got a net worth? I mean, like even Donald Trump's got a net worth. I don't know what it is. One billion, one and a half billion, whatever it is. And so, if he gave away so much money, well, then that's it. He's back to zero. But do you think God has a net worth to begin with? It doesn't matter what God gives away. God can't get to zero. Amen. See, that's a static view is an unsaved perspective. I think that's why people have some problems with healing. That, that you, just went to, you just went to the bank of heaven too many times and you just bankrupted the bank of heaven because you got healed 13 times and they've never been healed once and you're a dirty rat because you just got 13 healings and they didn't get any. This is their perspective. But I noticed that Abraham never apologized to Abimelech for being the man of promise. 
He walked in it. I said he walked in it. And so we have already been blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. And I can tell just by looking at you, 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 you don't have your mind around it. So there's nothing that God can possibly go out and do for you on Sunday, November 30, that he's not already done. He's already done everything for you that he's going to do. So my job is not to get God to do something. My job is to believe what he has already done and to enforce it. And we're going to get into this. My job is to believe and then to enforce it. So it says there, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Well, what does that mean? That means that so far as God is concerned, I already have it. So far as God is concerned, you are in perfect health. So far as God is concerned, every need is met. So far as God is concerned, every bill is paid. So far as God is concerned, you have more than you need. The question is not, has God done the work? The question is, have I been walking in the plan of God for my life? And every means every. Of course, people will come back and say spiritual blessing. Well, that's great, but I need a physical blessing. I need a material blessing. And this is where people miss it because everything that exists in the physical world first existed in the spiritual world. Spiritual things are manifested in the physical world. Physical things are manifestation of spiritual things. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth are material. They are composed of matter. In John 4, verse 24, it says God is a spirit. So how, how did God, who is a spirit, create the worlds which are physical and material? If God is a spirit, and the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth and the universe are physical, that means that a spirit being created physical things. If that's true, that means that spiritual things were first and are more real more substantial, more lasting than physical things because it took spiritual things to create the physical. So everything we see first existed in the spiritual world. You see that in Hebrews 11.3. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So the heavens and the earth first existed in the mind of God. Say it out loud. The heavens and the earth first existed in the mind of God. God first thought and then God spoke what he had thought into existence. So God literally used his faith. That's why we've been in the prayer of faith in Mark 11 for a couple of months. That's why Jesus said, have faith in God. In the Greek, it could be rendered or from the Greek, have faith the faith of God, or have the God kind of faith. What kind of faith is that? Well, the kind of faith that God exercised in Genesis chapter 1. He decided what he wanted, and then he spoke. He spoke by faith. And a spirit being, namely God, imagined what he wanted, and then he spoke by faith, and physical stuff showed up. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul writes, it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken with that same spirit of faith. He's referring to David. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. And this is why there's so much of a problem and criticism with so-called confession. It was in that same time frame. I just decided I was going to say about my life what God's word said about my life. And frankly, and let me tell you what. A, a minister friend in Dallas on social media this week said something I thought was really good. He said, if you would spend one extra hour a night sleeping and spend one less hour a week talking to people, you'd get further in life. Because frankly, tell your neighbor, forgive him ahead of time for what's about to come out of his mouth. Most people aren't worth talking to. I mean, what's more productive, talking to somebody for an hour or going to prayer for an hour? And frankly, from my experience, I'll tell you, I'm 58 years old. You know what's more productive than talking to somebody for an hour? Taking a nap. 
Glory to God. I mean, I know what God's going to say. God's going to say something that'll bless my life, that'll be productive, that'll be full of promise, right? But there ain't no telling what's going to come out of somebody's mouth. I've got one uncle living, and hopefully he won't see this message, but every time I'm around him, he wants to tell me about George Washington's prophecy. Well, you know, I'm a smart guy, so the first time he told me this, I looked it up. And uh, it can't be verified. It was his dream about a third war, a third world war. But I looked it up. I mean, it can't be verified. And so I'm a realist. In other words, if it's something that can be verified, well, I might be interested. But if it's just something that can't be verified, well, you know, it just goes in one ear and out the other. But every time I'm around him, he says to me, you still don't believe that, do you? He's my uncle. I don't want to offend him. I just say nothing or go back to eating my salad or whatever, you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you can, you can talk to folks and not get that much out of it. But what if we spent, what if we committed, what if we did this, what if we crossed a faith line and we said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say about my life what God says about my life, whether people like it or not. When our children were little, now Sue's parents never fell out with us, but my parents did. And my mom was supposed to be a Christian. And the children would be, the world would call them sick. We didn't call them sick. We called them recovering. Because your body has built into it an immunity system, an immune system, so that even if you catch a cold or the flu or whatever it is, your body just goes to work on it right away to what? To recover. So we never walked around saying they were sick. We said, well, they're recovering. They got some symptoms. And we always said the same thing. They'll be better by morning. And oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, the flack we caught. But we just made up our mind. I used to tell them. This is my life. I'm going to live it the way I see fit. You lived your life the way you saw fit. You never asked me about nothing. So guess what? This is my life. I used to tell him this. Respectfully. But I made up my mind. I have been blessed. Past tense. In the heavenly realms. With every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Say it out loud. There's nothing left undone. Amen. Say it again. Jesus, Jesus has, left has left nothing undone. We see this, we see this same thing in uh, Abraham's process of faith in Romans 4, Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father, speaking of Abraham in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the death and calls things that are not as though they were. Number two. Envision what you want and then say what you want. Don't say what you fear. Don't say what you dread. Say what you want. All through Genesis 1, the phrase repeats, and God said, and God said, and God said. So God would say what he wanted, and, and, and God would say it, and then it was. Somebody might say, well, that's God. Well, why do you think we spent two months studying the prayer of faith? Because Jesus said, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have the faith that God has. What kind of faith is that? To believe and speak. God pictured what he wanted, and then he spoke what he wanted into existence. Hebrews 11.3, what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In fact, in every human invention that has ever been created, it was first of all in, in the mind of a man. I remember sitting somewhere, it was a restaurant or somewhere, and I drew the basic floor plan for the I-30 building on a napkin, a paper napkin. Anything that you see, even this aluminum pulpit or speaker stand, was in the mind of a person and then they put it probably on a CAD drawing. And then they sent the CAD drawing to a shop. And somebody knocked out 
a, uh, a sample. Then they decided, well, we like this, we don't like that. They changed it, and then they put it on the production line. But it began in the mind of a man or the mind of a woman. Hebrew, excuse me, Ephesians 1, 3, again, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. So everything you need, say it out loud, everything I need. Everything I need. Say it again, everything I need. everything I need. See, everything you need, a spouse, an automobile, a house, a job, money, clothes, furniture, a washing machine, anything you need, anything you might ever need, anything you might ever desire, already exists in the realm of God. It is already right now in the storehouse of heaven. As a child of God, you can go shopping in the supermarket of heaven with your faith and bring home everything you want and need. You want to know what's available? Well, we find out what's available in the Word of God. Well, I wonder what I can believe God for. We dealt with that last Sunday. I can't go to God and say, well, I want three more wives because that's contrary to the written Word of God. If it's not in the Word of God, it's not the will of God. I don't have any right to believe God for it. Well, automobiles aren't in the Bible. Well, I'll tell you what is in the Bible, livestock, and that's how they used to get around. They used to get around on livestock. Well, we don't get around on livestock. Your donkey could be run down on I-20, so we don't get around on livestock, right? We use automobiles, so I can believe God for that. And I, I'll tell you what, I can find other verses that cover my situation repeatedly all through the Word of God. He has promised to bless all the work of my hands. So I find out in Ephesians 1 that I'm already blessed. I am blessed because anything and everything I need is already available to me by faith. And this is why there is lag time between the time when you pray and claim something until the physical manifestation arrives. What you ask for has to come from the spiritual world to the physical world. And Satan and his demons are trying to stop the flow of blessings from heaven to you. Let's go back into the Old Testament. Look in Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. This is an angel speaking to Daniel. Your words were heard, and I have come in response to them, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael... The chief princes, one of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. And I said last Sunday that we see ourselves described or who we ought to be. We see who we ought to be described in the book of James because it says we're like the farmer who patiently waits for the harvest. But I've seen people live for God two years, walk away, tithe three years, walk away, be faithful in church four years, walk away, be faithful in marriage five years, walk away. But the power is to be consistent and to never quit, never give up, always pray and never give up. That's what Jesus taught. Always pray and never give up. Well, we see an example right here in the book of Daniel because the angel says that from the first day Daniel prayed, the angel was sent with the answer, but the answer was held back by a prince of Persia for 21 days. We know it wasn't a, a man, a physical person, prince of Persia, because how could they hold an angel back? So it must have been an emissary of Satan. I see things, I don't see them, I don't look. I hear things, and I keep my mouth shut about it. But I'm going to make an exception today. 
I hear about people that people bring to wedding receptions. I hear about people who bring people to baby showers. I hear about people who are, you know, friends with so-and-so on Facebook. And I say nothing because I don't want to offend anybody. But I'm just astounded. I do not have a single relationship on this planet, including Sue, that I put ahead of my relationship with God and the Word of God. Not one. The son of a famous pastor is teaching nonsense. It's ridiculous what he's teaching. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that I'm not the exception here. Your beloved, you know, sweetheart, Pastor Sue, is of the exact same mind. I get such a bum rap for being so tight. But let me tell you what. That German woman I'm married to, she's tight too. So this famous pastor that we know, his son is just teaching nonsense, just teaching nonsense. Church income's going down. I mean, attendance is crashing, just nonsense. And so I said to my wife, I said, now what would, what would you do if I was gone and Austin started teaching that? She said, well, I'd fire him. <laughs> and I'd tell him, we got to get somebody in here who believes the Bible. And I thought, see, it wasn't just the looks I was after. The woman's got brains. <laughs> because this is what people do. This is how they shipwreck their lives. Oh, that's my friend from high school. You got to be kidding me. It's unbelievable. The destruction. Your income is not going to rise any higher than the average of your five best friends. If you want to get better playing tennis, who do you play with? Somebody worse than you? Talk to me. See, and that's why, frankly, that's why you keep hanging out with those people. Because, of course, if you hang out with a whore, you're going to feel very moral. If you hang out with a drunkard, you're going to feel sober. If you hang out with somebody who's never in church, you're going to feel spiritual. You see that, how they just love this? <laughs> I bet I'm getting likes on Facebook right now. <laughs> oh, this is great. I love this. You're building me up or you're tearing me down. And I just don't have time for people who tear me down. I remember Kenneth Hagin, God bless him, he'd tell people, don't, don't do anything. Don't try and exercise faith. Just stay neutral. <laughs> because a lot of times, you know, they just mess themselves up. Why, why am I dealing with this? Because something has to happen in your heart where you decide that I'm going to have what God says belongs to me, whether Gertrude likes it, whether Tommy likes it, whether my high school friends like it, whether my brother-in-law likes it, whether my niece likes it. I am going to stand with God. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I'm going to have what belongs to me. And if I'm the only person in town that has what God says belongs to me, then so be it. And on top of that, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Because they can get saved if they want to. They can walk in faith if they want to. Because God's not running out of anything. And so that's the bridge we crossed. We just, man, I just made up my mind. I was going to have what God said. And there were people that didn't like it. 
But you notice it hasn't held me back. I said, you notice it hasn't held me back. So your number three, your confession of faith enables you and your angels to overcome that spiritual opposition. See, we're to, well, last Sunday we talked about the lag time between when you believe you receive and when you actually receive. There's time because it's the law of sowing and reaping. So I believe I receive. Jesus says, I believe I receive, and then I shall have them. So if he says, believe you receive and shall have them, one is present tense and one is future tense. And we said last Sunday, you shall have future tense, which you believe you receive present tense. Well, now we see from Daniel chapter 10 that there could be spiritual opposition. Satan doesn't want you healed. Satan wants you dead. Satan doesn't want you blessed. Satan wants you broke. Satan doesn't want you financially free. Satan wants you bound up in debt. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So this is the will of God. And this is why we have to stand. This is this thing of being tenacious, having determination. Look at Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His power. Put on the full armor of God that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. And this is literally what we do. I believe all my needs are met. <clears throat> I thank you, Father God, your word is true. I believe I receive. Enough money is coming every seven days to meet every need and pay every bill. But then you get to Friday and there's not enough. What are you going to do? I'm going to stand. I'm going to lift my hands in the, in the face of evidence to the contrary. <clears throat> What choice do I have but to submit? I'm not going to submit. I'm going to lift my hands. Thank you, Father God. Your word is true. The Lord my God is meeting all of my needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. I just keep believing I receive. My confession not only strengthens my faith. Again, you can read about this in Romans 4. It says Abraham gave glory to God and was strengthened in his faith. We could read it this way. By, by giving glory to God, Abraham was strengthened in his faith. So when I lift my hands and I open my mouth and I refuse to submit, I refuse to knuckle under, and I believe God, it's not just a matter of my faith being strengthened, it's also a matter of me facilitating these ministering servants of God, ministering spirits of God and angels of God doing their work. And if Daniel, if Daniel had his answer put off 21 days, I don't think I'm a peer of Daniel. I could very well have my answer put off 21 days. So I got to stick with it. Faith is now. There is no God is going to or God used to. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Faith is now. I've got to believe I receive now. So I believe I'm saved now. I believe I'm filled with the Holy Spirit now. I believe I'm healed now. I believe I'm the prospered of the Lord now. Say it out loud. I am, I am the, blessed, the blessed, the healed, the healed and the prospered, the prospered of the Lord now. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And finally, number five, God is now, and God only answers in the now. In Exodus 3, 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. He didn't reveal himself to Moses as I was or I will be. I am. This is why faith is now. This is why you have to believe now. I believe I receive now. God hears now. God answers now. The answer is on its way right now. The angels are dispersed and dispatched to help bring in my blessing right now. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Amen. 
I am where God says I am. I may not look like it. I may not feel like it. I, my circumstances may not give evidence of it, but I know in whom I have believed, and I know what God has done in my life. I'm telling you, your life will change overnight. The problem, as I said last Sunday, is not in the heart. Your heart's been born again. The problem is in the mind. The mind's been exposed to the media. The mind saw relatives on Thursday. The mind watched the news. So I've got to renew my mind by the Word of God. I am who the Word of God says I am. I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. All the work of my hands is blessed by the Lord my God. Jesus took up my infirmities. He bore my diseases. With His stripes, I have been healed. This is who I am. I'm where God says I am. I learn in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3 that I'm seated right now with Christ in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. I learned from Dr. Summerall that means I don't have to allow a demon to manifest itself in my presence. And since he told me that, I have not. We have what God says we have. Every blessing of Abraham is ours. Galatians 3. Every promise that God gave in the New Testament and the Old. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Say it out loud. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. I'm telling you, you go to work, you go to work with a whole different mentality. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can run through the troop. I can jump over the wall, David said. In other words, applied to his line of work. I can do it. Out here in this culture, they're selling a victim mentality. Victims, 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 victims. That stinks. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be a winner. I want to be a victor in Christ. So this is who we are dealing with. We're dealing with the great I am. So when you pray, you've got to believe you receive now because he is the great I am. He only operates in the now. Our God is the God of now. So when these well-intentioned Christians take the promises of God and they shove them off into the future, they make the word of God of no power and no value in their life. Well, I'm out of time. I hope you enjoyed the message this morning.